join us for the rosary at, at seven, but um, we'll dive into this consecration. Hopefully it's been a, a good first couple of days entering into just what an incredible man of God St. Joseph is. So I invite you to, to grab your books right now, and we're going to start with a prayer. This prayer um, will be posted. Also, if you want to find it in your book, it's page 247, the Veni Sancte Spiritus. And if I could have our Lamb family, the gracious hosts, to do every other stanza with me, I'd appreciate it. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams, which sweetly flow in silent streams from thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the shore, O come, thou source of all our sores, come, come fill our hearts, hearts with love. O thou, O comforters the best, O thou, the soul's delightful guest, the pilgrim's sweet relief, O blessed light of life thou art, fill with thy light the inmost heart of those who hope in thee. Without thy God has nothing man, have any friends the word in the man, nothing can harm us to thee. Lord, wash away, wash our sinful stains away. Refresh from heaven our barren clay, our wounds and bruises heal. Grant to thy faithful, dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word, the sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace we, in peace may God and Enjoy the four Amen. Thank you. The wording's a little bit different, but um, beautiful nonetheless. Okay, now if you would turn with me to, to page 243, um, we're going to pray the prayer of St. Bernadine of Siena. Remember us. Sorry, I'll give you a chance if you need to find it. Page 243, the prayer of St. Bernadine of Siena. Remember us, St. Joseph, and plead for us to your foster child. Ask your most holy bride, the Virgin Mary, to look kindly upon us, since she is the mother of him who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns eternally. Amen. Okay, wonderful. Good to be able to start off... Uh, this, this time in, in prayer and just wanted to give you kind of a, an overview of what I was hoping to do. I wanted to allow it to be a, a check-in um, to be able to, to come together. I think we all, all need that. I've um, wanted this consecration to be not necessarily a, we do it every day together, we hold your hand or no, this is a, a chance for you just in, in your own time, in your own way to find the, the time in your day. And you, we all have busy days and especially now they seem to be getting busier and busier. So to make this consecration a, a priority and um, I'd, I'd love to talk to each and every one of you, like what's the best time to do it? Is it first thing in the morning? Is it uh, in the middle of the day when you have a little gap or maybe at the end, but to find that time where you can really pray and enter into to these moments. And hopefully too, you've been able to find five minutes of silence in prayer along with this uh, these consecration prayers and the reflections that that five minutes minutes of silence uh, in a certain sense is more important than the actual meditation um, to allow for a lot of things. First of all, just a silence, a self-awareness, a recollection of ourselves, a present um, recognition of the presence of God in our lives, and also to allow these incredible truths about St. Joseph to sink in that fertile soil that our, our hearts can be uh, nurtured with silence, allow for the seed to, to find a place to really bear fruit. So um, hopefully you've been able to do that. And hopefully you found these truths to be incredible about St. Joseph, right? So here's kind of in my experience, I don't know about yours, is that I've always known a lot about St. Joseph, but I feel like just in the first seven days, I keep saying like, I didn't know that about St. Joseph. I didn't know that about St. Joseph. And it's, it's one thing after the next. And I'm just grateful for Father Calloway really diving in and, and breaking open some of these 
truths, insights, gems, nuggets about who this man was that God chose, handpicked to be the husband of Mary and the father of Jesus. And so I don't know, like how, how's it been just even praying the litany of St. Joseph? This is the staple prayer that should really be a guide for our hearts as we go through these 33 days. In his introduction, Father Calloway talks about maybe you even come to memorize it, which isn't out of the realm of possibilities. I think I often find myself um, thinking like, man, I spent all this time like memorizing silly movie quotes or song lyrics. Why don't I memorize something a little bit more worthwhile, like a litany of St. Joseph or a prayer of the church or a scripture passage? And that we might find time to commit something to memory as, as Catholics would be so good. But the litany of St. Joseph, as you prayed, are there any specific lines that jump out to you? Uh, they all seem to jump out to me, but there's something about lover of poverty that's jumped out to me, especially right now in our, our world that I, I think is especially in, important to us. When we have a materialism that just runs rampant. Um, when the FedEx and UPS trucks seems to seem to never stop, there's always more to deliver. And, and in two days, we need it in two days, right? And that St. Joseph might be a, a lover of poverty. It'd be a really good prayer <laughs> intention to, to really pray. Um, and as we've gone through each of these days, I think we've come to really appreciate some of the different aspects about them. But I guess I want to invite you, um, if you will, in your book, to turn to page 252. And, and here's just a little guide through some of the first seven days of our reflection. And I wanted to pick out just a, a couple of these questions to be able to meditate on, offer some of my own insights, and even to encourage you to, to take time to, to sit down with it as well, to answer them yourselves. Like, what, what, has, what have I learned about St. Joseph in, in all of this? Um, on page 252, I want to invite you to look at question number three where it says this, Mary is your spiritual mother, Jesus is your brother, and St. Joseph is your spiritual father. Have you ever thought of St. Joseph as your spiritual father? What appeals to you about relating to St. Joseph as his son or daughter? I just think this is a, a beautiful question for all of us to really ponder and think about in the question. Um, I'll tell you first for me, the idea of a St. Joseph consecration was immediately kind of off-putting. I have such a love of Mary and this total consecration to Jesus through Mary is something that I take very seriously. And I know is going in going through the consecration to Mary with all of you, we just didn't take that lightly. <laughs> Many of us spend an hour every single night really um, allowing it to penetrate our hearts and to allow that gift of ourselves to Jesus through Mary to be a real thing. And then all of a sudden to come up with, and now we're going to do a consecration to, to Joseph. Might be like, all right, well, what the heck? Like, <laughs> what did that consecration to Mary mean? If like, now we can just do it to Joseph. And, and yet to appreciate this, that a consecration is about us acknowledging a special relationship and entrustment that we would allow ourselves to be given over to. And this familial relationship that we have to Mary through Jesus of being a, uh, united with him as a brother, that now all of a sudden we also can call Mary our mother. And I guess I'll just be honest, it, like really in, until talking to Father Calloway and reading this book, I just never really considered that Joseph would be a, a spiritual father for me. And even that I have a right to call him a father. I like, I understand that he's a saint. I understand that he's an awesome saint. I understand that I can pray to him, but, but I can look to him as a spiritual father and that I would have a right to call him father. Because if Jesus is my brother and Mary's my mother, then why is that like that gap there for Joseph never really been connected. And so just to appreciate this as a, a beautiful reality of, of something that I can um, look to him for in a way to relate to him. Um, so what about you? What's been, been your thought of a, looking at Joseph as a spiritual father? I think we all have a lot of um, earthly spiritual fathers, maybe a priest, maybe just another man or someone like in our lives, hopefully. 
Um, but that St. Joseph might, might be a guide for us as well it is an incredible invitation. All right, the next question is uh, number four that I wanted to spend some time with. It says, St. Joseph is a representative of the Heavenly Father for us and a model to imitate in our quest for holiness. How do you think St. Joseph is an image of God the Father to us? How is he a model that we can imitate? So I love this. Um, one, one of you sent me a, a great email just kind of asking a little bit more about uh, this consecration of St. Joseph. What does it mean? And kind of asking really this, this same question, like, is it, is it just about imitating him, seeing him as a, a real model, a disciple, someone that we can follow after? And it's like, yes, but more too, right? And I think about, I think it's the Ephesians 3.15, where uh, Paul says that, all fatherhood in heaven comes from the one fatherhood, the one father in heaven. And to think about how all of our fathers, they've all fallen short, and yet they all give us a little glimpse, a little reflection of the perfection of our heavenly father. And here's what we've been invited into as we come to know more about who St. Joseph is. We realize he's not just any father. And even that he's not just a fallen father with a lot of faults that he was given an incredible grace to be a holy, prayerful, recollected, self-possessed, virtuous, reverential, generous knight of Jesus and Mary. Like this isn't just any spiritual father or any father. Like, he doesn't give us a little glimpse into the heavenly father. He gives us the greatest glimpse into who God the father is. And that St. Joseph is this representative of the Heavenly Father as a model for us to imitate has just set my heart on fire in appreciating all of the things that he wants to teach us. And so what are the things, um, what are the ways that he can be a model for us to imitate? I was just thinking about uh, a lot of different things, about his listening heart, about his trust. Think about in Matthew that... Uh, the angel spoke to Joseph in a dream, not once, not twice, but three times. God spoke to Joseph through a dream. And I've thought about this a lot. Like, what was that like whenever Joseph woke up from that dream and kind of processed in his grogginess, maybe, you know, wiping some of the like crusties out of his eyes? Like, what, what happened? Like, was that just a crazy dream? Was I, was I thinking things? And then looking at his wife, Mary, and his little baby boy, Jesus, like sleeping there and wondering like, Egypt? Really? Now? Like, can I wait till the morning? Can I wait till the next day? Can I wait to like pack up my things and call my friends? And then he went immediately. Like St. Joseph just had a heart that trusted that what wasn't accidental, wasn't something for him to think about, ponder, run by a second opinion, and then like he could trust that the word that God gave him was real and something to be acted upon. What other ways is he a model that we can imitate? Just think about his love of Mary and Jesus. One of the things that changed my life was when in college, I really felt the Lord invite me to spend an hour a week in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in a chapel. And in my time of waywardness in college, this one hour a week where I was able to come back and to spend just in 60 minutes in time, um, adoring Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, in that monstrance, it changed my life. And it was just an hour, it was, it was one hour a week where I got my sorry, sorry soul out of like the life that I was living in with all of my preoccupations. And I went, drove to church and spent an hour in adoration with Jesus. Consider that St. Joseph's whole life was spent in adoration of Jesus. Like he was able to spend every moment adoring Jesus, even while Jesus was sleeping. Just was he there at his bedside watching him as he was growing up and playing with his friends? Like, was he just watching Jesus or was he adoring the God man? And all of this time of talking to him, teaching him, working with him, teaching him how to pray, these moments of adoration. How can Joseph be a model for us? 
just to be an incredible adorer and lover of Jesus and to not think that any time with Jesus is wasted time. And how about a lover of Mary? In the same way that he would have this incredible heart just to venerate and be caught up with the incredible beauty and glory of our earthly and heavenly mother, like that he was just blown away, taken, swept off his feet by this incredible, most beautiful woman this world has ever known, that he was able to love her unlike anybody else. And here's the thing, as Father Calloway talks about it. He wants to share that love with you, and he wants to share that love with me. And that we want to like, hey, Joseph, I want to love Jesus too. I want to love your wife, Mary, too. He's like, good. Let me, let me teach you how. Let me bring you in. Let me show you some of the aspects of who they are. It's just an incredible gift. And so that we wouldn't be afraid to draw especially close to Joseph in this time that our hearts might expand to come to love Mary and Jesus more. How about you? What are the things that you see in St. Joseph have you, as you've done these first couple of days that you think um, he's inviting you to model after him? <coughs> Question number five. I promise we're not doing all of these, but just a couple of these that jumped out to me. But I have a water tech support. <laughs> Thanks. Um, the, the fifth question, when the second person of the Holy Trinity took on human nature, he had to learn things from his father, St. Joseph, according to the normal process of human development. <clears throat> Can you think of anything that St. Joseph would have taught Jesus? Why is it important for all children to have a father? A great question, huh? Here's something that, again, like we should appreciate that um, God wanted to make sure that Jesus had a father, like even having a mother that was immaculately conceived, preserved from all sin, could have done an incredible job of raising Jesus as a single mother. God still said, yeah, but I want him to have a father, right? And I think like out of all of the politically incorrect things that I could say on this uh, St. Joseph consecration Zoom time, um, I want to propose this, that we need fathers, that we, we really need, need fathers. Fathers aren't replaceable. There isn't just like a generic like parenting that mothers and fathers can do interchangeably, but that there's a way that a father can love their children, their son or their daughter that's irreplaceable. Now, a lot of it can be um, doubled up and it can be complimentary, but that a father would have a unique and irreplaceable way to show a son or a daughter what it means to love as a man, what it means to work as a man, what it means to behave as a man, what it means to pray as a man. Like these aren't just repl replicable, replicable activities, but that they take place in the very nature and spirit of each and every one of us who are made male and female. Can you think of anything that St. Joseph would have taught Jesus? And why is it important for all, all children to have a father? I wonder if St. Joseph taught Jesus not to take himself too seriously. I don't know why that, that's come to mind, but I, I guess I want to throw that out there. Like there are a lot of things, right? And so like take this, to, to your prayer, but the St. Joseph would uh, teach Jesus how to not take himself too seriously, right? And I like, I just have no idea, but I know like looking around at the younger generation today, like how paralyzing and anxiety driving like pressure can be, <laughs> that like there's so much pressure on children from the youngest of ages to perform, to succeed and to do everything perfectly or else your entire future is destroyed and ruined, um, that Jesus, had literally the weight of the entire world on his shoulders. And not just at that time, but every, all of humanity that's come before and all of humanity that would come after him, that Joseph would be able to teach Jesus how to carry that weight, that burden with a levity, with a joy, with a sweetness, with a, a not letting it like weigh him down in, in a way that was paralyzing, but in a way that was even joyful. 
and even to be able to laugh in his humanity of the ways that he was limited, that God allowed himself to be limited in one body. But Joseph would teach him even the, the ways of being able to, to laugh at himself and to keep going and to keep trusting in his father. What a freeing gift that would have been as a, of a father to be able to teach their, their son that reality. Okay, jump ahead to nine. This is a, gr a great question, huh? St. Joseph is the first knight of Our Lady. Hopefully that jumped out to you in doing this, this consecration. I love that Father Calloway uh, pointed this out. He's the first knight of Our Lady. Have you ever thought of St. Joseph as a knight or a warrior? How would you describe St. Joseph? This is just an incredible image. And I, I really think there's something in the, the hearts of all men that want to be a protector and a warrior of a beauty, of a lady. That there's, there's something in the heart of every single man that wants to take up arms, that wants to do battle, that wants to take down the dragon to be able to rescue the lady. And it's like, oh, that's a nice fairy tale, right? And it's like, it's more than that. Like that it would actually tap into the, the deepest desire of a man to be able to, to prove himself that he's worthy of the beauty that he longs to love. And his worthiness is found in sacrifice and not being afraid to lay down his life and to fight. And how does Joseph do that? Just like that it and like the, the short parts that he gets in scripture, he's a warrior and he is a knight. And sometimes we, we just think of him as like, oh no, like this little shepherd cane and he's got his little cloak. And but to have a, like more of the knightly image picked out when even he's there with his pregnant wife going into Bethlehem, trying to find her a place to stay. That he's not just knocking meekly on the door, but he's actually pleading, imploring, protecting his wife to be able to find her and her to be his to be son a place to stay for the night. And that here he is, a knight doing whatever he can to protect them. I think about the, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. I don't know if you ever thought about this in kind of the layout of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is up on a hill. It's one of the greatest hills uh, in all of the Holy Land. And so to go up to Jerusalem, you had to literally climb the hill. And it was this great conquest. When you finally got there, you were able to be at the temple and offer worship to God. And in the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, they've already traveled down the hill. And it's only after three days that they realize it's after a first day that they realize he's gone. So now Joseph has to take Mary back up the hill against the grain. All of Israel is coming back down the hill and he has to lead his wife against the grain, against all of the traffic and to get back into that temple, into that city to be able to find his son. And just to imagine the warrior heart of Joseph taking Mary under his arm and protecting her as he comes into that city to be able to find Joseph and to talk to people and locate him. And like, he is a warrior and he's not just gonna bow down or roll over and give up, and, but to really fight for Mary, for Jesus. What about you? Where do you see Joseph as being a, a first knight of Our Lady? One more question, number 10. The reading from the Venerable Mary of Agreda on the privileges of devotion to St. Joseph is very powerful. Are you experiencing an increase in your relationship to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph after this week's readings? And I love this. So I just wanted to, to read this little section here and to, to ask you to, to consider if any of this has actually come to your, to your heart or your recognition of what's going on in your soul as, as you go through this consecration. So this is on page 228 uh, from St. Mary of Agreda. She says, I have been informed concerning certain privileges conferred upon St. Joseph by the Most High on account of his great holiness, which are especially important to those who ask his intercession in a proper manner. In virtue of these special privileges, the intercession of St. Joseph is most powerful. First, for attaining the virtue of purity and overcoming the sensual inclinations of the flesh. Second, 
for pr procuring powerful help to escape sin and return to the friendship of God. Third, for increasing the love and devotion to most holy Mary. Fourth, for securing the grace of a happy death and protection against the demons in that hour. Fifth, for filling the demons with terror at the mere mention of his name by his clients. Sixth, for gaining health of body and assistance in all kinds of difficulties. Seventh, for securing issue of children and families. And I just think as I, I've come to talk with a lot of people and their own struggles in, in their life, their personal life, their spiritual life, their family life, their work life, it's like, I just imagine how um, each and every one of you listening to those uh, are probably considering, if you haven't experienced one of those, probably have a heart that longs for one, two, or all seven of those. Like, yes, give me that virtue of purity. Give me that um, increase of love and devotion to Mary. The grace of a happy death, please, Lord God. Like, on and on. So this is what St. Mary, or what, what is she? Servant of God, venerable Mary of Agreda, offers his privileges conferred, conferred upon those um, by St. Joseph. So let's go to him and really beg for these different privileges that St. Joseph, our spiritual father, so desires to give to each and every one of us. Okay. I want to now to, um, come to a, a conclusion of, of this time. I wanted to read day eight together. Um, the section of the delight of saints I'll allow you to read that on on your own and then we'll be able to do the litany of saint joseph together on page 233 and we'll close with a final blessing so if you're ready let's turn to page 27 and we'll read this day eight together and i invite you if you've already done it me too <laughs> it doesn't hurt to do it again This part of the litany of day eight is St. Joseph, pray for us. Pope Paul VI says, We see that at the beginning of the New Testament, as at the beginning of the Old, there is a married couple. But whereas Adam and Eve were the source of evil which was unleashed on the world, Joseph and Mary are the summit from which holiness spreads all over the earth. The Savior began the work of salvation by this virginal and holy union. St. Paul VI. Marriage is at the heart of creation and redemption. As St. Pope Paul VI states, Adam and Eve were present at the beginning of creation, the Old Testament, and Joseph and Mary are present at the beginning of God's recreation, the New Testament. Jesus himself speaks of the kingdom of heaven as a wedding feast. See Matthew 22, 2. St. Pope Paul VI's statement at the beginning of this section is incredibly profound. On some level, he is presenting the idea that St. Joseph is the head of the New Covenant family, as Adam was head of the First Covenant family. This is a fascinating idea, one that has rarely been explored in theological studies. Usually when we think of the new head of the family, the new Adam, we think of Jesus, and rightly so. Jesus is God, he alone regenerates humanity. Nonetheless, as head of the Holy Family, St. Joseph was the head of our head. He is the father of our Savior, the patron of the universal church, and our spiritual father. St. Joseph is a new Adam. St. Joseph is, after Christ, the new head of the human family. As such, we are obliged to obey the four commandments in this regard, honor your father and mother. Failure to love and honor St. Joseph is an offense against God. In fact, the fatherhood of St. Joseph is so important for us that our spiritual growth depends on it. If Jesus himself increased in wisdom and knowledge through the fatherhood of St. Joseph, we need St. Joseph's fatherhood to help us acquire the proper attire needed for entrance into the wedding feast of heaven. St. Joseph will help you get to the wedding feast of heaven. Since we know that St. Joseph loves us, and so we love and honor him in return, we can trust that he will help us get to heaven. The greatest thing any father can do for his children is help them get to heaven. Our first father, Adam, ruined this possibility for all his children. Our first father's disobedience caused the downfall of all creation and kept us from entering heaven. St. Joseph's fatherhood, on the other hand, elevates us and helps us to enter heaven. He loves us, helps us become saints only path that leads to heaven, Jesus. St. Joseph is the delight of saints. Every saint loves St. Joseph. It is impossible to find a single saint who did not love St. Joseph. While devotion to St. Joseph developed slowly over time, no saint ever disliked St. Joseph. It's impossible to truly have love of God and neighbor in your heart that is to be holy if you disdain the husband of Mary and the earthly father of Jesus Christ. 
To enter heaven, you need to resemble your spiritual father in his steadfast love. He will help you acquire the correct attire, virtues, and holiness needed to enter the wedding feast of heaven. As 1 Corinthians 15 says, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also the earthly, and as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. Okay, I invite you now to turn to page 233, or to follow the screen for the litany of St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Noble offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most courageous. Pray for us. Joseph most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of workmen. Pray for us. Glory of domestic life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Pray for us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Pray for us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household. And prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And through the intercession of St. Joseph, terror of demons, may Almighty God bless you, protect you, and bring you to everlasting life. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.